So, uh, now we have Cindy. Cindy to give us an update on a restoration project that she's interested in. project, but it may turn into one. Uh, I'm going to talk about another issue, just very briefly tell you about an issue that's going on that some people probably aren't aware of. How many of you have heard what is being proposed on the Chehalis River? Okay, less than half of you. How many people know where the Chehalis River is? Okay, that's better. <laughs> so this is the Chehalis River. It's on, in the southwest part of Washington State. And just a couple of facts about the river that I'll just go through quickly. It is the longest free-flowing river in Washington State, meaning it has no dams at this point. It is the second largest river basin in Washington State, and it's actually the largest river basin completely within Washington State. The other river basins have the headwaters somewhere else. So this is the largest one completely within our state. It is one of the biggest producers of wild salmon. So most of the salmon in this river system are wild. They are not hatchery, which is huge. It's one of the only river systems in Washington State that does not have listed salmon. So the salmon are not listed as endangered or threatened, which you can look at in a couple of different ways. Uh, they are declining for sure, they just haven't been listed yet. So one way to look at that is that there's no protection for them, but another way to look at it is there is a lot of room for improvement of that river system. So it can still be recovered if the right actions are taken. So there's a lot of hope for this river system because these salmon are still, for the most part, healthy, although some of them are really declining. The other really important, significant thing about the Chehalis River is it floods. There are minor floods that are relatively common, but every now and again they get significant flooding. They call it the 10-year flood, and that doesn't necessarily mean it happens every 10 years um, undesigned. The last big one was in 2007. But when it floods, it's pretty catastrophic. Uh, I-5 closes, there are businesses in the area that are affected, there are a lot of farms in the area that are affected. So something needs to be done to control the flooding to mitigate this. So there was a, a panel put together, a work group put together to try to figure out what to do, and this is what they are recommending, a new dam. So Howard was just talking about dams that were trying to get taken down. This is one that's about to be built if this actually goes through. So this was proposed by the Army Corps and Washington Department of Ecology. This dam would be 24 stories high, and it's the length of three football fields. So it's huge. Obviously, there are a lot of concerns. Uh, one of the big issues is all of that flooding area with the farmland, this wouldn't protect all of it. It would only protect a very small portion of it. So all of these other farms that are being flooded would not be protected by this dam. And then of course there's a lot of concern about what it would do to the salmon. Again, these are salmon that are relatively healthy. Uh, they did a study around this area where this dam would be built, and they found that most of the salmon there are actually wild, not hatchery. So this is a really important run of salmon that we need to protect. And another reason that it's so important is because it is on the list of the stocks for southern residents. This isn't working. But it's on the list of um, the uh, priority Chinook stocks for southern residents. You can see in the red there. Uh, that is the Chehalis River run. That's the basin. And this is really important salmon for southern resident orcas. So this dam is a big concern. Obviously, the people in the area, something needs to be done to help them. But we're saying that they need to look at other options besides this. There is a group of people that are working on this a coalition called the Chehalis River, uh, Chehalis River Allies. And it's a group including the Chehalis Tribe, the Quinault Tribe, American River, Pacific River, a lot of environmental groups, Orca Network is part of it. Uh, so basically these people are trying to get the word out because a lot of people don't realize this is happening. In that area of Washington State, people are aware but the broader community just doesn't know about it. And so that's why I wanted to bring this to your attention because as the orca community, the people that care about the whales, this is something we need to be aware of and we really need to be spreading the word. So I just wanna ask you to have this in your radar and think about it. 
So what is happening with this is that there was a scoping period where they took public comments. The draft environmental impact statement is coming out February 27th, and there will be a two-month comment period. It's really important to get people out there to comment. If you can't go to the public meetings, which are going to be kind of in the Centralia, Grays Harbor area, at least send in comments. Kind of the unfortunate timing is that this is right around the same time that the Columbia system draft environmental impact statement is coming out. There's obviously, understandably, going to be a lot of attention on that. We don't want this one to fall away either, so please just keep this on your radar. There are ways that you can engage. Uh, some of you have been to our CAF workshops before. This is a community workshop put on by community members, for community members. It stands for uh, Community Action Look Forward. And there's going to be a workshop in Friday Harbor on March 15th, and this will be one of the topics. We'll be talking about this as well as the Snake River Dams. So please come to that if you can, learn more about it. We will have speakers that will be talking about this issue and can give you a lot more information than I can. I'm not an expert at this. Uh, I do know about the issue, but some questions I probably wouldn't be able to answer, but I can find the right person to answer them. So please feel free to grab me uh, during one of the breaks if you have any questions. We do have an information sheet on our ORCA network table, a big flyer about this. There's also an email sign-up sheet from one of the members of the Chehalis River Alliance. They're called Twin Harbors Waterkeeper. If you want to be on their email list, that is at our ORCA network table, so feel free to sign up for that and you'll get email updates on this issue. So again, I just wanted to put that on your radar. I also, there is a documentary that's being made about this. It's almost ready. It will be rolled out in March after these, this environmental impact statement comes out. I just want to show you about a three minute trailer of that video and hopefully we can get this to work. trailer you can probably see it online I can give you a link for that so you'll just have to take my word for it <laughs> oh well that's okay that gets, saves us a little bit of time so we can get back on time again so if anybody is interested in watching this trailer let me know and I can get a link to you where you can watch it online and again the documentary will be out in March they're going to be, do be doing a showing of it at Patagonia in Seattle as well as other places so if anybody is interested in having a screening of this in your community, let me know and I can get you connected with the person who made the video. So, yes. The title is Shahelis, A Watershed Moment. And if you look it up on YouTube, it's probably there. So, all right, so hopefully you're all a little bit more aware of this issue. Keep it on your radar and uh, please engage when the time comes. Thank you.